authentically peculiar, authentically peculiar, authentically peculiar, authentically peculiar with Marcia. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. We have reached the last episode of season one. This season has been phenomenal, filled with great guest speakers that have shared with us ways to address and confront the trauma that holds itself in our bodies discovering the impact of relationship with food, having a clearer understanding regarding toxic masculinity, approaching the grief cycle and loss in many areas of your lives, to self-care and self-love and solo travel. And we kicked it off with a four-part series where I discussed unsticking the trauma. It has been a phenomenal season and I can't say thank you enough. For today's topic, I am actually here in St. Thomas Virgin Islands celebrating my 54th trip around the globe, the universe, the sun being alive on my birthday and taping this episode, it was so important to me to be outside of my normal walls because this first season of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia was outside of my walls. I would love to always be behind the camera if possible, but what I've learned is my voice goes out before because I've been graced with wisdom resilience and strength and the ability to motivate others to reach their most authentic life, to live their best authentic life. And I am excited about that journey. Today's topic is going to be, and I've kind of been given hints all weekend, but the, today's topic is, I loved me again. Throughout season one, the topic about the traumatic experience from a young child to an older adult who's discovering that they're still holding on to the roots of that trauma, understanding that holding that trauma in your body creates dis-ease, irritability, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, all kinds of things, broken relationships, the inability to trust, to be vulnerable, and to move on. That's what was discovered about trauma being held in your body. It sometimes presents itself as an irregular relationship with food, eating too much, eating too little, trying to be a part of what society has approved for your life. This episode today is going to talk about and encourage you to really see yourself and love yourself again and again and again. It is so important for you to recognize your own value. It is very important for you to appreciate and validate yourself. Other people are always, always, always going to try to put themselves first in your life. We come from a society that promotes that. But I'm here to tell you that it is okay to operate in places of selflessness in order to love you again. What does that mean? Love myself again. If I don't love myself already, how can I do it again? I'm sure some people are asking that question. Well, let's start with that. Let's start with what is it like to be in love with you? 
If you were fortunate enough to be on the uh, virtual book launch on yesterday for making progress in the process to fulfill your purpose, you were blessed to hear an eloquently written love letter to oneself. One of the things that tends to happen, especially in Western society, is we tell each other that if we focus on ourselves, then that means we don't love other people and we're selfish. Well, in order to change that mindset and that thought, you have to recognize the importance of putting you first in your life. Again, I connect that with the analogy on the airplanes, not even an analogy, the truth. On the airplanes, when they are going through the safety system check process and delivering the message to you about self-protection, they'll tell you first, if the oxygen or the pressure in the cabin changes, the oxygen mask will drop down. You place it over your head first before helping someone else. Why is that important? If you pass out, for a lack of oxygen, the other person is going to keep their mask on because they're going to become fearful of passing out too. When you love yourself first, it begins with your self-permission. Giving yourself that permission to say, I love me enough to go first. I love me enough to trust me first. I love me enough to be vulnerable first. Yeah, that's right. First place in your own life. That's what you deserve for you. So oftentimes a lack of love can be demonstrated with negative conversations with yourself about you. You know, those posts that went around all the times to F my life and I hate my life and all of those negative things or people battling themselves because of their weight, people battling themselves because of their status in life and things of that nature. Those negative words, those negative statements that you have been interweaving into your own existence, that thread doesn't belong in your life anymore. What belongs in your life is being able to see you for yourself. I read a post earlier that says, if you're talking about wanting to lose weight, being in your best health in one statement, in the next statement, you're talking about how big you are and all those kind of things, I was guilty of that, then you're contradicting what your outcome is going to be. I remember that I would be so hard on myself. I would start losing weight and then I would sabotage. I would start losing weight and then I would sabotage. I would start losing weight and then I would sabotage. And then I had to make a decision. Lose weight at the pace and the healthiness for you and be consistent. Everything that you need to do in life requires consistency. I am not saying that it's easy to maintain consistency because I'm here to tell you that there are some foods that I'm going to want to eat. But what I've had to do is moderate when I give myself permission to eat those things. And then I give myself permission to not feel guilty because I'm making a conscious and intentional decision on something that I wanted. When we can remove the guilt and the shame out of our decision making because it's something that we choose, then we are empowering ourselves to be the best that we can be. When we have decided that what others think about us is not what we have to own, then we can begin loving ourselves again. When we move out of that space of wanting to fit in, you know, belong, be a part of the crew, be a part of the clique, all those kind of things. When we take that out of a priority rotation and make ourselves a priority, then we can begin to love ourselves again. If you're still waiting to be accepted in the group, if you're still waiting to be a part of the popular kids, to be liked by everybody, hoping everybody to like you, 
you've been wasting a lot of time in a space that doesn't belong to you and it no longer belong to you and it no longer serves you. You get the right to move. You get to write the right to change positions. You get the right to say, I don't like it here and I don't want to be here. I'm choosing me first. Here's the thing. When you have the right energy about you, when it's positive, when you're speaking life to yourself, you glow differently, you move differently, you exist differently. The people that are supposed to be attracted to you and coming into your space and your purpose, they will. The people that are supposed to support you, they will. Don't get caught up in the physicality of people's support. How are you supporting yourself? How are you speaking to yourself? Are you battling between good, bad, or indifferent? Are you laughing at jokes that people are saying about you but secretly hurting yourself? secretly damaged on the inside, secretly crying crying on the inside. If you are, it really is time to make that change. Do not allow yourself to be demeaned by you or others while you're trying to fit in. That's not your role. That's not your space. That's not who you are. You have to give yourself permission to say, I love me again. I like, let's start with like. Do you even like yourself? If you don't, why not? If you're working on liking yourself, what are some things that you need to do to get out of the way? What are some of those distractions that's stopping you from being true to yourself? Move those. They don't have a place in your life. They don't serve a purpose in your life. Check your list of associates and friends. I have very few friends. I have quite a few associates. I have even more passerbys. The passerbys are the ones that be like, hey girl, hey, you know, and keep on going. We speak for a few minutes and keep on going, but they're no one that I would really be vulnerable with or bring them into a particular space with me. My associates, they get to come in a little further. They know a few things about me, but they don't know the in-depthness of who I am because I choose it that way. And then those that get the luxury of being on the friend list, those are people that I can be vulnerable with. Those are people that are going to be truthful with me as I'm truthful with myself. Those are people that are living their authentic life and purpose. The one thing that I've learned is it's not my job to fit in. It's not my job to be in that box. I wasn't created in a box. I had a whole womb to myself for me to develop and become who I needed to be. I am that peculiar one. You are as well. Unless you were born with a twin, even then you all most likely had different sex. So you still develop certain parts of your personality yourself. What you want to do is identify for yourself who you are and who is the person that you're trying to escape from. A lot of us are trying to escape from people of the past, from ourselves of the past. You know, the little person that People talked about and said it was bad or ugly or this or that, not smart. All those derogatory things that you heard when you were growing up, that's not who you are today. Who are you today? How would you define you today? How would you love you today? Can you recognize love? What does that look like? Hmm. That looks like starting with you. When I say I love me again, I remember being a single mom, being twice married um, to two church folks that uh, almost destroyed me mentally both. Um, I remember the church uh, almost destroying me mentally both, but I have no hard-heartedness towards any of that. 
all of those situations and circumstances were part of my journey. There is no reason for me to hold on to that. There's no reason for me to hold on to my sexual violator as a child. There's no reason for me to push energy towards them. I love me enough to recognize that those things happened in my life. They shaped me. They were devastating, but they don't control me. I control me and my happiness and my love. I get to set that standard in my life. I get to be my absolute best friend, me. I get that. I, I, I get to choose to be my best friend. I get to be my biggest supporter and my biggest cheerleader. Are you your best friend? Your biggest supporter, your biggest cheerleader? Hmm. Do you trust you? Do you mind being vulnerable and truthful with yourself? Hmm. Sounds like some things got to be worked on in order to get you to that space of loving you again. Life was not meant and no one promised us that we wouldn't go through anything. No one said to us that it's going to be smooth sailing. We wouldn't have some bumps in the roads or anything like that. We were given breath, life, passion, and purpose. Sometimes, just like when digging for diamonds in the African mountains, you have to get into some risky places to get to that diamond in order to be able to take that hard outer shell that hard coarse material off in order to see the beauty that's inside of you. A lot of the situations of our past have hardened us. And even when someone takes, takes the risk to come to you and to befriend you and to be open and to love you, we're so busy being hardened that we don't know how to see they're trying to help us to escape. Well, you have to want to escape those hardened places for yourself. You have to choose for you that you deserve to love you again. You deserve to feel the positive energy of self-love. You deserve to make you a priority in your own life. The moment Again, that you give yourself that permission. Watch how things change. Watch how things move. Watch how you begin to loose the shackles that have bound you. Bound you to the past thoughts of your anger, your frustration, your lack of forgiveness. Letting go. Yeah, those, those bounds that decision to say the per to the person that hurt you, you hurt me, but you don't belong in my present. Having that change in your own attitude, that change in your own mindset so that <clears throat> you can begin to see you and love you again. Do you even know what you look like? Can you describe yourself? Can you stand on who you are today? See, I remember the Marcia of old that people called bad, mean, fast, Jezebel, uneducated, not smart, unable to endure, no resilience, weak, unlovable. I, I remember all of that stuff that other people use to define me. But let me share with you how Marcia defines Marcia. And I am hopeful that in this episode, by the time the recording stops, that you are in a place to grab hold to a new definition of yourself and begin to walk in that place. Marcia today is strong, resilient, filled with wisdom. She is loved and lovable. She is a guider, a motivator, a self-appreciator. 
authentic, authentically peculiar, embracing, holding, secure, safe, sustained, and sustainable. She is love and warmth. She is intelligent, intellectual. She is empowering and domineering. Dominant, dominant in everything that I do. She uses fear as a stepping stone to reach her next goals. She motivates others. She embraces those that are hurting and fill them with joy and passion and process and purpose. That is the Marcia of today. And those characteristics will travel with me for my remaining days and I'll add more to it. You get to evolve every day. You get to change your narrative. You get to change your story. You are not stuck. You're just not stuck. Repeat this for me. I'm gonna take, take a side step. Repeat this for me. I deserve to love me again. I deserve to love me again. I want to encourage you to say that to yourself every day. I want to encourage you to wake up in the morning after giving that gratitude and praise for another day to see yourself as a gift because you are. You are the gift that keeps on giving. You just have to make sure that the right people are unwrapping the gift where the right person begins with you. When you can recognize that you are a gift here in this universe, to be your absolute best self, you can begin to peel the layers and produce the diamond that's underneath. You can produce the gem that's underneath. You can produce the power that's inside of you. You no longer have to hide from yourself. You no longer have to hide from others. You no longer have to cave in and put on a mask and go somewhere to present to others as if you're strong. The right people are gonna help protect you when you're not so strong. The right people are gonna come into your life to encourage you and shower you because you're gonna be encouraging and showering yourself. You're gonna be lifting yourself up to a higher standard because you deserve that. You deserve absolutely every gift that is mentioned and preserved just for you. We all are here for a purpose. We all have gifts. Some people may have the same gift, but they don't deliver it the same way. Never get caught up on looking at how somebody else is using their gift. The only person that you are in competition with every day is you to be better than you were yesterday, to be better than you were an hour ago. If you have a setback to where you aren't able to really move out of a negative space, show yourself some grace. Have that moment, address what sent you into that negative spiral Show yourself some grace and make some changes. Do things differently. You are not stuck unless you choose to be stuck in a negative space, unless you choose to be stuck in an angered and irritating space. I am not saying that you can't express anger because anger is an emotion. What you do in that expression of anger determines who's in control. If you're in control of your life, your anger should never take you to a place that you don't want to go to. It should never allow you to misrepresent yourself. If you are true to who you are and authentic in who you are, you should never, never get outside of your character. And if you do, give yourself permission to say, man, just tripped out. Where did that energy come from? 
Why, why is it there? What, what is going on? I had to do that. Even recently, I had to say, mm, you really were tripping. Pull it back. Where's your anger coming from? One of my guests said that oftentimes, and I believe it was Star Ray Cannon who talked about self-love and self-care, but she talked about the disappointment is usually a driver of fear of trusting and loving yourself and giving yourself permission to trust and love others and to be loved by others. When we walk in those states of disappointment, we hold tight to the things that have been comfortable, that irritability, that anger, that belief that we're not enough, that belief that we don't deserve to be loved and that we're not lovable. Well, let's break the shield of disappointment and go ahead and begin to tell yourself that I am loved and I am lovable and it's okay for me to love me again. It's okay if you decide whatever love needs to look like in your life. For Marcia, part of, of my love journey has been setting my standards and expectations, removing any possibility of manipulation from anyone, not giving them the room to manipulate me whatsoever because I set my standards and I stick with them. That's the bottom line. That's how I show myself the most amazing love. I set my standards and I stick with them. That doesn't mean that there are some days that, you know, I'll be tried and it's okay. It's okay to get tried. It's also okay and even better to pass the test. When you walk in those spaces of setting your standards, giving yourself that permission to love, to move, to exist, that is where your power comes from. Learn to love you again over and over, every day, every moment. Remove all the things of the past that has told you you weren't enough. Stand firm in who you are, defined by you, not by others. Move in a direction that's pleasing for you. If that means you got to cut people off, cut them down, move them away, the whole nine yards, that's what we got to do. And it, it's okay to do that. Just know that in this process of life, you deserve absolutely everything that has been set aside and designed for you. Learn to love you again. Take risk. Move out of the boxes that have held you back for so very long and stand firm in who you are. You are awesomely made. You are walking in purpose and passion. And I bid you a closure to this season of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia in season one. I hope that you are going to walk away with breaking the bonds of trauma, living and loving on yourself, and being your absolute best self to you first, and then extending that to others. Take good care. I'll see you when season two begins. You are authentically peculiar. And thank you for joining me on this last episode of season one of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Take good care.